Welcome back to Just Campers and welcome to our classic VW Beetle buyer's guide. So the first thing to check is make sure that the paperwork tallies up. So you want to make sure that the chassis code that's on the V5 tallies up with what's on the car. If there's any old MOTs with the car, any old bills from garages, you want to make sure that, that all ties up mileage wise as well. Number two is paint and body. Before we look at any paint and body, we need to make sure that the paintwork is dry. When they're wet, they look really good. So classic cars of this age would possibly have had a few repairs previous and even possibly full repaints. So the first thing we need to look for is rust bubbling through the paintwork. So like here on the roof gutter, this bubbling in the paint is actually corrosion coming up through from underneath. Other key areas to check are the door shuts, including the sill panel and the B pillar. And don't forget to check the bottom of the doors. Another really good area to check is around the windscreen seal. As you can see where the seal joins the body on the scuttle panel here, we've got a little bit of corrosion. If this gets too bad, it can be a real major job to remove the windscreen and quite an extensive welding repair. Another area to check was where the wings bolt to the body. As you can see, it has a strip that runs between the two, which actually can trap moisture. And we can already see the corrosion popping up on the wings. But remember, it's not a major deal to replace these wings as they only bolt on and off. Another really good check to do is to look down the whole side of the vehicle. And we're looking for the panels to be all wobbly. If they're wobbly, they're usually full of filler. And then lastly, we're looking for previous body repairs, not necessarily the paint, but possibly filler repairs underneath the paint, such as this one here. As you can see, this seam has been repaired with filler and it's all, the corrosion is all starting to pop back through. But do remember to check the whole car. With classic cars like this, we can have rust anywhere. So once you've had a good look at the top of the vehicle, you need to then get down on your knees and have a good look underneath. Make sure you've got a torch to hand and check the following areas. Make sure you check all the way around the wheel arches and then you can spot areas such as this. Whilst looking for corrosion in the front, we're also looking for signs of accident damage. And also check the rear wheel arches. A common area for corrosion on these cars is just above our torsion bar here on the suspension at the rear. So we need to check our floor pans. We need to check the heater channels are all intact and that the running board is not fallen off. Also make sure our jacking points are in good condition. So see if you can get a good look on the torsion tube frame, make sure there hasn't been any welding repairs done. When you are down looking at the floor pans, I don't really want to see them covered in a real thick, heavy underseal because it could be hiding stuff. I do want to see it uh, covered up with some possibly protective wax or a protective paint, but not the real thick, stodgy stuff. Number three, a nice, quick, easy one to check are the bumpers and the chrome trims. Again, we're looking at the bumpers and we're looking for any signs of corrosion. These look really good and they've been painted on the inside. So these are going to stay good for a long time. The chrome trims strips on the outside, they're pretty original, but look quite good. And again, all around the windows, we're making sure that our chrome trim is in good condition as they can be quite expensive and fiddly to repair. And number four, the engine. The first thing I do is double check the oil. So we need to look at level and condition, and that will give us a good idea of how well it's been looked after in the past. Also, while I'm in here, I'm scouring around and making sure I'm looking for oil leaks to see if we've got any obvious leaks on the top side and that everything's in its place. Again, fuel pump, we haven't got any fuel leaks. Everything looks to be where it should be. Also, it's a good idea to either check the service record if they still have one or ask the current owner when it was last serviced. Did it have a set of spark plugs? when the oil was last changed, that sort of thing. Also, we need to look at the fan belt. This will give us a good in indication of when it was last adjusted and changed. So this one still looks quite good. I can still see the writing on it and it may do a little bit of adjustment, but it's actually quite good and it's not cracked. Last thing we need to check is the end float of these air-cooled engines, very important. So we can grab the pulley and give it a move and you should have a very small amount of movement, which is what we've got. So that's good. And don't forget to have a quick look underneath the engine because we're looking for excessive oil leaks. These air-cooled cars are, are known for uh, small oil leaks. Like this sort of thing is fairly normal. But what I wouldn't want to see is all of this soaked in oil. That would be uh, one of the alarm bells ringing. Whilst underneath looking at the engine, we need to look a little bit further forward at the transmission. And again, we're looking for major oil leaks in this area. After you've done your visual engine checks, the next thing you'll want to do is actually fire it up. But before we do that, we need to make sure that it is cold, and I mean cold to the touch, and that it hasn't been fired up before you get there. So what we're looking for on startup is excessive engine noises and excessive smoke from the exhaust. 
Both of those we don't want. Number five, the brakes. The first thing we're gonna start with is the brake fluid. I wanna look at the condition and the level. You can find the brake fluid reservoir under the bonnet. This one here on this 1970 Beetle is on the inside. The earlier Beetles would have the reservoir down behind our spare wheel. First thing we need to do is take the cap off and see the level, that's pretty good, and the colour looks really good. So that tells me that the brakes have probably been looked after. If you're looking at a VW Beetle with brake discs on the front, just like this one, we need to have a look at the disc condition. And we can do that through the wheel. We want to make sure that we haven't got a massive lip on the edge of the disc, that's good. Also, you can look through the wheel and see how much brake pad material you have left. It's worth checking for fluid leaks behind the brake caliper and the brake hose itself. So all you need to do is turn the, the wheel all the way to one side, and then we can get a look at the caliper. And we want to make sure that the caliper is dry and free from brake, brake fluid leaking around where the hose goes in and where the brake pads are. Drum brakes on Beetles, the only thing we can inspect visually is from the inside. We're looking for fluid leaks either from the brake wheel cylinder or possibly the hub seal. Number six, wheels and tyres. We need to check the overall condition of the wheels and the overall condition of the tyres. So with the wheel turned slightly, we can check the tread depth right the way across the whole tyre. Also look on the outer wall for cuts and slices. The thing to double check is the actual date of manufacture of the tyre. If you look here, this one says 1920. Well, that means it's the 19th week in 2020 that this was actually manufactured. Also, when checking your alloys, if you find scuffs and curb abrasions, it's another good bargaining point to get money off the sale. Number seven, suspension. All we can really do is a visual check from the outside. We're gonna take a look at the dampers, make sure they're not leaking oil, and the actual mounts of the dampers, we wanna make sure that those rubber parts aren't falling apart. And also, while we're here, we need to look at our ball joint suspension covers, make sure they're not split. Top and bottom in good condition, and the track rod on the other side for the steering. Number eight, interior. Firstly, we need to make sure it's complete and it has all the bits that it needs. Obviously, it's an old classic car, so there will be a lot of wear and tear on some items. And I guess it depends on how bothered about that you are. Now, for instance, this seat here, it's in reasonably good condition, apart from my spider little hole here. And what that means is, yeah, unfortunately, we've got a spring coming through here. So we do need to replace the seat pad underneath that. In, on general, the carpet is all pretty much all together. Again, we just want to make sure that it's all there and all complete. It is down to personal taste at the end of the day. Also, I take a look at the door cards because that tells me how well the car's been looked after. They're not completely warped and fall into pieces. So that's really a really good sign. So number nine, it's test drive time. And now we've done our visual inspections. Now we're going to use our ears and take a listen. When we first fire up, we want to make sure that, that engine doesn't rattle. And also a quick visual on the exhaust, make sure we haven't got loads of smoke bellowing out. I've turned the key on. We've got our generator light and our oil light. Now it's really important that that oil light goes out very quickly. So I'm going to give it a couple of pumps of the carburetor because this one's got a Weber on it. The engine hasn't been started, so we can do a true cold start. So next I'm going to fire it back up and just double check our clutch travel. So let's fire that up there, select first and just start bringing that clutch up and feel where it bites. So we've got a nice amount of movement before it starts biting. So that feels good. So I'm happy with the brakes and the clutch. Let's go for a drive. What's really good is that we're on quite a bumpy car park here. So what I can do now is listen out for any knocks and bangs from the suspension. Although this is quite low and firm, I can't hear anything knocking untoward. So that's good. And then obviously during your test drive, you need to make sure that it changes gear nicely and that all of the gears work and there aren't any funny noises coming from the gearbox. Again, using our ears this time. And this feels really good, so that's cool. And obviously during our test drive, we need to keep an eye on the dials and gauges. We want to make sure that our oil temperature doesn't climb too high and that that gauge actually works. Oil pressure is correct and our volts are reading well. And make sure we've got plenty of fuel. And also, make sure that reverse selects nicely. On this one, obviously, I've got the lovely MP shifter. So I can put the button in and go straight into reverse. And it's nice and smooth. No jumping about, doesn't jump out of gear. We're good. Number 10, if you're happy with the overall performance and condition of the car, make sure you check your wipers, your headlamps, and your indicators before you drive it home. So that's our top 10 checklist for buying a VW Beetle. If you want a more in-depth guide, then visit justcampers.com. We've got a whole heap of information on there. We've also got a printable checklist that you can take with you. We hope this helps you buy your 
Dream Beetle. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.